wow, ooh, it's loud. I can't even see a thing out there. So thanks, Doug, and thanks, obviously, to the organizers, but a huge thank you for being here. Uh, this is really a remarkable, remarkable opportunity. And of course, I'm here to share my passion and my vision for a healthier community. And in the process, I'm going to take some risks because I'm going to share with you my outrage and the outrage that fuels this passion. Outrage may be a strong word to use, so if you're uncomfortable with that, just say it's what keeps me up at night. So my hope is that you'll get to understand what drives me. You may disagree, you may disagree, but in fact, you need to know and understand why. And I will urge you at the end to dig in, to dig in and think about what keeps you up at night. Find your inner passion, your outrage, and commit to do something about it. Make something happen, take transformable, transformational steps, and yes, achieve that passion and hopefully achieve a healthier community as well. So what would a healthier community look like? And at this point, I'm going to invite my two new friends. I think I can see them, Duart Brown and Sam Taylor, to come and join me. This is something I've always wanted to do, so we're going to make a go of it and have a life adventure together. Because Sam and Duart are going to help me um, as I share with you. They're going to conceptualize what I'm sharing about my vision of a healthier community um, right behind us. And I think we're going to try and um, let you see it as it happens. So again, we're all in this together on this adventure. Um, and their interpretation, of course, will hang at Columbus Public Health, but it will be on our website, on my Facebook page, but it won't be complete unless you send us your tweets, you send your thoughts about what would be in your healthier world, your better and safer world. You can add them on the board outside as well. But again, it's a common vision, it's one vision that we're searching for. So I don't need to tell you that we live in an increasingly complex and cynical world. And frankly, some of the systems that support us and uphold all of us are being attacked. There are questions everywhere I go. It seems as if everyone's saying, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And in fact, if you were to listen to many people talk, you would think that in fact our country was in a hopeless state, that we are helpless to do anything about it. And I reject that. I don't believe it. At my core and in my world, we can create a community where we help each other, where in fact our community where we have fair opportunities for everyone to have economic, social, spiritual, mental, and physical health. And in my healthier world, it's yo-yo, Y-O-Y-O versus wit, W-I-T-T, and wit wins. Because in fact, we've been far too long living in a society where you're on your own versus, in fact, those communities that are far healthier, those nations that are far healthier, and their wit. They're in it. We're in this together. So think about that as we move forward. The challenges that we face today, well, in fact, they're, they're very different than the ones our parents and our grandparents faced. But it's not the worst ever. In fact, it's just a different shape of challenges. And these challenges do offer us new opportunities, new opportunities to think about how we create something together, how we create, how we innovate, how we use technology, how we use, of course, our engineering and design to create a healthier world. So to frame this conversation, I wanted to share with you some of the things that, of course, outrage me, that keep me up at night, and that's both being a scientist, a physician, an advocate, and a mom. And so here are a couple of those things. The first, my daughter. My daughter and all children in this world, or at least in this nation, are destined right now to have a shorter lifespan than all of us in this room. That is outrageous, and that keeps me up at night. Next, of course, 30 years into the HIV epidemic, 30 years, and African Americans are still having an increasing number and an enormous rate of infection. And 20% of gay men are infected with HIV in our world. This is a preventable disease. And violence, there is too much violence. There is violence that seemingly is wiping out many of our young people, and this is interpersonal and gun violence, and we have to take a stand. And related to that, of course, is bullying. And so, yes, bullying has reached epidemic proportions, though I think it's gone on for some time. But now it's taken a new twist. It's moved from the playground to the cyber world. So, indeed, we do need to take a stand and protect each other. That keeps me up at night. And then blacks. Blacks, 
others of different races and cultures. In fact, these groups do have different experiences in their health outcomes. And why is that? Well, let me just share. African Americans in this community, no matter their income, the rate, the ability for their infants, African American, African -American babies die three times quicker, faster, more of them before their first birthday than their white counterparts. And that keeps me up at night. So, yep, these things do outrage me. And yes, um, they may be a bit outside your comfort zone, but I am going to urge you to consider them because until we have a broader understanding of how they affect our community, we will never, ever truly experience our optimal health. So how do we transform our collective rage into an active and healthier world? Let's begin by taking just a little bit closer look. So at one time, parents were worried about their kids dying from diphtheria or polio or infectious diseases. And now, parents are worried about their kids who are overweight and how they are now developing as children diabetes, heart disease, and other serious chronic conditions. These illnesses used to only affect us as adults. Obesity is harming our future generations and our nation's economic health. The future of our economy, the cost of caring for these generations with these chronic diseases will bankrupt any healthcare system. So my picture of a healthier community and a healthier city, it will help kids and it will help the adults who care for them and love them to reverse those trends. And that gets me out of bed every morning. So thankfully, we live in a great city, and yes, we are making progress. But let's think about what, again, that vibrant, and co vibrant community might look like. So imagine, if you will, uh, a mom, a parent, who walks her kids to school every day. As she walks the sidewalk, crosses the street, the crosswalk, the safety lights, all make it possible for it to be a healthy and safe journey. After getting the kids to school, she hops on public transportation, during her stressful day at work, she takes a walk outside to get some fresh air, maybe a lunch, uh, she goes and does some errands, and then she takes public transportation home. And when she gets home, she stops at the corner store, where indeed there is fresh, local foods available. And yes, they're affordable as well. She picks up a nice piece of fish, she gets some fresh flowers, and yes, fresh fruits and vegetables to take home and prepare that dinner. She prepares it while her kids are doing their homework, they're using computers, and yes, they'll probably have some entertainment besides using them for homework. But indeed, this mom and this family has decided to let technology help them, support them, but not control them. And yes, they'll, after they eat that fresh dinner, they're going to go out and take a walk, chat with neighbors, maybe go to a rec center, walk to the library. In fact, I'm going to share with you, that picture reminds me of growing up in San Francisco. We walked, we biked, and we rode the trolley. And I loved that corner store. So yes, indeed, I know it's possible. It's easy, it's actually the way people do live their lives. And we can do it right here in Columbus, right in your corner of our community. We can do it just in pieces or we can all do it. So again, I know there are different towns, but we can do it. We also need to add a little bit of sunshine and water and, of course, some green because we have food deserts right here in our community where residents simply can't get access to fresh and affordable foods. We don't have stores in some neighborhoods. All they have are corner stores that focus on the sales of tobacco and alcohol. So as an active and vibrant community that combats obesity, we must include affordable and available access to fresh food. We also need our farmers, our farmers markets, our community gardens, and our, we need our developers, our community planners, and all of us to make an effort to see that every neighborhood has access to fresh food. We also need to design our neighborhoods so we can be active and safe. And yes, we also do need to have clean air to breathe, fresh water to drink and recreate, and for you and me, some sunshine. Or how about a lot of sunshine? But of course, we'd like to couple that with some needed showers for our yards or for our local farmers. And then in our healthier world, we need to address preventable diseases like HIV. I actually experienced the beginning of the HIV AIDS epidemic as a young physician in San Francisco in the early 1980s. It was an amazing experience, and yeah, transformational for sure, and sometimes very frightening, because, again, at Ground Zero, we really didn't know much. Uh, there was a lot that was new and unproven, and we weren't sure if we were going to make it either. We were worried about our own safety. The one thing we did know for sure was that people were suffering and dying, and they needed us. 
We learned as we went and we found out that obviously both doing the right thing but being thoughtful and respectful was always the right thing. And at the time, we were reacting to the disease. And now, 30 years later, we're still reacting to the disease. Medical advances, of course, we've come a long way as far as supporting people, but in fact, the infection rates continue to increase. HIV is preventable, and it's time for us to be proactive in our efforts. We must do more to educate our young people and all who are at risk. And my healthier community encourages screening for every chronic disease. So in fact, HIV is just an example of a chronic disease. We screen everyone for HIV, and so then we all know our status. And yes, an ounce of prevention is the right thing, but early treatment is the only way to survive HIV and the other chronic diseases. So many of the lessons that I learned from HIV and, of course, that experience are with me today. Accurate information, caring, respect, and yes, passion and activism are all important. And then there are guns. In my healthier world, there, we are far less violent. We have become interpersonally brutal. And so gun tragedies, yes, they're an epidemic in our community and in others across the nation. And yes, the gun is simply a symbol. It's a vector. And in this case, there is no vaccine. We cannot stop this by just taking a pill or going or or the usual way I would think to talk about a vaccine to stop a vector. We have to go upstream, and we must support our families and our neighbors in supporting our kids. It's chilling, but a recent study I just read showed that 100%, or at least nearly 100%, of children who have not learned to read by the time they finish third grade go to jail. How does that work? If you can't read, you drop out of school and you're on the street. There are no jobs, and so all of a sudden, you need money, you turn to drugs, and then you're going to prison or worse. So teachers and librarians and mentors, all of us, we must support our kids to help them stay in school, to be excited about learning, to excel, and yes, to graduate from high school, to help them avoid the violence that claims far too many lives. And yes, indeed, conflict resolution in our homes, in our families, in our neighborhoods is critical. But you might not know that planting trees and having community gardens and sidewalks and yes, front porches that are used, all of those corner stores reduce violence in our neighborhoods. And yes, music and the arts and sports and play are important too. It's all about hope and opportunity. So what happens to a kid on Livingston Avenue? It does matter to this Arlington mom. Does it matter to you? So when kids fail, we all fail, and we do pay a steep price. And that takes me to bullying. And yes, we need to make a commitment to find and to eliminate bullying when it presents itself. Far too many have been suffering for far too long, and now, of course, we're all familiar with the deadly consequences of the actions of kids who failed, of course, who failed to treat others with respect. So in an era where now a child can be humiliated and taunted in the cyber world across the globe so fast, we need to, again, take action to step up and to make a difference. We have to teach our kids tolerance, diversity, and respect for all people, especially those that are different than we are. And yes, we must talk to our kids about either not being on one end or the other of bullying, but also to step up so they can stop it as well. And yes, for those kids that are different and that actually fall at the hand of bullies, we need to let them know that there is hope and it will be better. And yes, we might save a, li a life along the way and our world will be better too. And then my vision of a healthier community is also one where everyone, everyone has the opportunity for good health. Health disparities or worse outcomes by race or economic status are not natural. The simple fact is that inequality is making us sick. Consider that the United States is one of the richest nations in the world and that we spend far more on health care than any other country on the globe. And yet, despite our riches, we are 29th in life expectancy and 32nd in infant mortality. Among, among all nations, that is near the worst of every industrialized nation, and even Chile, Cuba, and Costa Rica are above us. So what's that about? Remember yo-yo versus wit? You're on your own, 
We're in this together. The nations at the top are in it together. Nearly 22% of children in the United States are, uh, are, live in poverty, and over half of the children born in Franklin County are on Medicaid. There's a huge human cost to this, but the financial cost is amazing as well. Over $500 billion in healthcare costs are attributed to racial inequities. So I was very blessed to be raised by two wonderful parents who instilled in me the value of diversity and fair opportunity. I will never forget joining my mother on a civil rights march in San Francisco in the mid-1960s. It was a transformational moment in my life, and while I may not have fully appreciated it as a child, the march and the things that I felt that day influence my decisions today. Today as a doctor, today as your health commissioner, today as a community member and a community leader, and yes, as a parent. We've come a long way since that march, but we haven't come far enough. Because unfortunately, as a society, issues of race and racism plague us. And health and the opportunity for health is still not equal. The color of your skin, the job you have, the neighborhood you live in will affect your health, good or bad. It's a proven fact that people of color, no matter their income, and certainly those without access to affordable and safe housing and jobs will not have the same opportunity to be healthy as you or I. Social policy, economic policies, quality and affordable housing, access to good jobs, safe neighborhoods, all of these are health policy and all of them are a part of my healthier world. So people can choose to be healthy and safe only if they have the opportunities to make those choices. We need to make sure that everyone has those choices. And in my healthier world, there's still something missing, and that's you. Because you are critical in making this world safer and better. And frankly, I can't dream a world that doesn't have these issues, and now I've lost my place. That's terrible. And <laughs> So it's an adventure, here we go. So I, I can't dream, uh, dream a world or make it a reality if we're not connected and we're not committed. So yes, indeed, I think by now you know what I'm made of. And now you have an opportunity to think about what are you made of? What inspires you? And what keeps you up at night? What is it that outrages you? And will, and will you turn that rage into action? So yes, it's about you. So I urge you to commit to four things. Get active. You need to be an active and vibrant part of this community. You're the seeds. And in fact, you're the seeds for your corner of, of our world. So please, plant them and put on your kids while you're at it. Hop on your bike. Take a helmet, of course. Um, take public transportation. It's good for your heart, and it's good for the environment. And yes, unplug your kids or someone else's kids and take them out to play. Get active in whatever your hood is. And of course, in the arts, in something. Find your passion and do it. Then consider and care for those who may be less advantaged than you are. Ask questions. Listen. Have a conversation. Learn. And then think, can I provide hope or opportunity? And take a, a stand against interpersonal violence or bullying. Talk to your kids about it. Take a look at yourself. What do you stand for? What examples do you set? And how willing are you to listen? I mean really listen, to learn and be respectful, respectful of others. And then connect. Connect and really connect with people, for that is how we will undo racism. Appreciate and respect and care about people who are different than you, and even if you don't agree with them, personally, morally or politically. Be active in seeing that there is fair opportunity in education, in jobs, in housing, in access to care, and in neighborhood safety. Consider government and corporate policies and what they do to advantage or disadvantage. And in order to enjoy a healthier world, we must care for each other. So what are you going to do about it? 
It is my hope that you will dig in to those issues that keep you up at night and will be so inspired that you will turn our collective action into a healthier world and make it a reality. You may agree or not or disagree with my vision or our beginning of a healthier vision. That's okay because between what you believe and what I believe, we will create a better, a better world.